Welcome to Gus Tech. These are two very different monitors. Today we're going to be looking at the difference between a TN panel monitor and an IPS panel monitor so that you can know what you're buying. The TN panel we're going to be looking at today is the VS247 from ASUS. This is an older TN panel from about three or four years ago. Still functions really well, still holds a lot of the merits of TN panels today. The IPS panel we're going to be looking at today is the LG 25UM64. This is an ultra wide monitor, but it is an IPS monitor and it does have a very good picture quality. So we're going to be comparing some of the merits between the IPS world and the TN world so you know what you should be getting for the different applications you may be using them. So let's talk about some of the benefits of a TN panel. Well, TN panels have the good, gooder, and goodest price available on an LCD monitor. Right now, you can get a solid TN panel, about 24 inches, 1080p, for about $100 to $150. It's going to have fairly good color representation, it's going to look pretty nice, and it will probably serve the needs of most users. One of the biggest benefits of going TN versus IPS is the fact that it has the lowest response time available in a modern day LCD panel type. You're talking about one millisecond. One millisecond GTG. Well, GTG means gray to gray, and basically is a gray image to a different gray image on the monitor. Obviously, colors are going to take just slightly longer, but overall, you're probably not going to notice it. In fact, the human eye can really not see anything faster than about 25 milliseconds. So why is it so important to have one millisecond? Well, you have to factor in the fact that you're going to have some time between the travel of your input devices, your mice, your keyboard, all the way to your computer, to your motherboard, to your CPU to process it, for your graphics card to spit the image back out to you, and then back onto your screen. So there is going to be some delay naturally to what you're inputting in your devices to what's being outputted in your monitor. So if we take that into account, having a one millisecond response time is actually pretty important for really fast twitch type shooters such as Counter-Strike, Battlefield, you know, Call of Duties, whatever shooters you're going to be looking at, and a lot of other games such as Dota that are really going to need some quick response times as well. To jump into the negative aspects of a TN panel, the viewing angles are horrible. And when I say they're horrible, I mean you really can't stand to the right, to the left, above, or below, basically directly in front of your monitor. If you're not looking at it straight on, you're going to get very washed out colors and poor picture quality representation. The other thing that's kind of a downside of a TN panel versus an IPS panel is the color representation in general. You see, a TN panel doesn't use the same kind of bit processing that an IPS panel does. TN panels use 6-bit processing, whereas IPS use 8-bit. Well, the benefit of using 8-bit is that it allows an IPS panel to have true 16.7 million colors being represented through 24-bit color representation on a computer. TN panels can't do that. Now, they can emulate it through a thing called dithering, and it's unimpressive. And you're going to notice as you compare this monitor to the IPS monitor we're going to be looking at today, that overall, it's going to be a little bit less sharp. It's not going to be as clear cut on the color representation. And again, the viewing angles are going to be kind of atrocious. But if you're using a TN panel solely for gaming, you're going to be using it to, you know, pwn noobs on the internet. It's actually a really good value and most people will find it beneficial. And if you're just doing light web browsing, you're not really too much of a hardcore gamer or you're not really into photo editing or video editing, a TN panel is going to get the job done 95% of the time. I use it as my daily driver, but we probably wouldn't use it to edit our videos because, again, it's going to look a little bit worse. So let's talk about some of the benefits of an IPS panel monitor. Well, first and foremost, we're going to notice that the colors are much better in an IPS panel monitor. You get darker darks, you get more vibrant colors, everything's a lot more accurate because it's true 24-bit color. 
That's 16.7 million colors to match your cool keyboard that changes colors. It really does look a lot better and a lot more true to life. Additionally, the viewing angles on an IPS panel monitor are going to be fantastic. It's rated officially, the IPS panel in general, as 178 degrees of viewing angle. The only reason they can't add those last two degrees is because you'd be sideways and you can't look at a monitor from the side. I, can do it, I can't do it right now. I just can't do it. They can't see anything. But oh, two degrees, there it is. So the fantastic part of an IPS panel monitor is that you can see from just about anywhere very accurate and clear cut colors. But what are some of the downsides? The biggest downside you're going to run into is that IPS panel monitors are slower inherently because of the way that they process everything and because of the horsepower needed to do it, they're not going to respond nearly as quickly as a TN panel. Typically, your gray to gray response, your DTG or GTG, excuse me, response time is going to be about 10 milliseconds, sometimes higher, sometimes lower. But if we're being completely honest, that will show through when you're playing fast twitch type video games. They also don't have the kind of speed range for the frame changes that a TN panel does. It's very hard to find an IPS panel that has 144 hertz refresh time. And if you do find it, it's going to cost you a third mortgage on your house. But that's okay, because again, these typically aren't for gamers. But when it comes to price overall, these are definitely going to make a much bigger dent in your TN than your TN panel counterpart. The biggest reason being that, again, if you're getting a faster monitor, you want it to be really good for gaming, but you also want it to be extremely nice looking, that's extra technology that IPS panels don't typically come with. So you're looking at doubling, tripling, or even quadrupling the cost of a standard IPS panel. Now a standard IPS, about 24 inches and 1080p with good, co good quality color representation, is going to be about $200. So you are getting a little bit of a premium on top of it, and especially going to be adding a premium if, again, you're looking for those faster response times. One of the benefits of this monitor in particular that we've been looking at here, this LG monitor, is that it's an ultra-wide. And ultra-wides are fantastic, especially for an IPS panel type, because if you're going to be doing photo editing, video editing, whatever the case may be, you can stick your preview on one side and your editing on the other side. And what that allows you to do is see on the same monitor with all the same exact settings exactly what every single change is doing to affect whatever picture you're looking at. So I would go so far as to say that an IPS panel is almost exclusively for content creators. There are exceptions. You can use it for gaming. You can use it for browsing the internet. You can use it to do whatever the crap you want. But honestly, you're going to get much more bang for your buck out of a TN panel for those applications. And for content creation, an IPS is definitely going to have the trump. So all things considered, which one should you buy? Well, again, a TN panel is going to offer a lot of benefits to the general marketplace. I would honestly venture to say that 95% of people out there are going to be best served with a TN panel. And the reasons being because the price is better on a TN panel, almost universally. The speed is better on a TN panel for gamers. And overall, most people don't care as much about the color representation and the viewing angles when they're just kind of goofing off on their computer or even getting hard work done on Excel spreadsheets. I don't think you really care that that green on top is a true green color. On the other hand, IPS panels can be very, very nice for individuals that are doing content creation. I would almost go as far to say if you're going to be doing any sort of serious content creation, video editing, photo editing, graphic design, you need to have an IPS panel monitor. The reason being because it's going to give you such better color representation, more accurate color representation, and the viewing angles are going to be such that you can throw it in portrait mode, landscape mode, doesn't really matter because it's always going to look the same. It's consistent and it looks phenomenal. So what about you crazy people that want the best of both worlds and you want to have the best image quality ever with an extremely fast response time? 
Well, there are a few IPS panel monitors that are coming out that have 144 hertz response time. Some of them are even going to be G-Sync and FreeSync compatible so they can match your graphics card's cool FPS output to make sure that it's super smooth and super quick. My personal opinion is that they're not really the best use of your money. It's going to cost you about as much as a rig that would be able to run them effectively. And I don't think that that's really the best thing for most people to buy. So, to recap, we love both of them. I use this TN panel every single day as a third monitor in my triple monitor setup. I don't use it to play video games on because it's only a 60 hertz monitor. I use my 144 hertz BenQ. But I do use this for browsing, for watching videos, for goofing off on Reddit, doing whatever it is I can do to distract myself on this monitor. This IPS monitor, on the other hand, is used every single day by my wife. She uses it to edit photos, to make videos and vlogs. She does all sorts of content creation on it, and she loves the fact that it's so crisp and so clear. So, remember, when you're looking at one of these to buy, think most prominently of what you're going to be doing with it. If you're going to be occasionally dabbling and making some videos here and there, probably the TN. If you're going to be doing a lot of content creation, go with the IPS. But again, you can't really go wrong with either one of them, and hopefully you've been a little bit more informed after this video. Thanks again for watching. If you liked the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment below if you have any questions, concerns, or you just really want to be heard, and maybe you have a good joke to share with us. As always, links in the description below to all of the products that we use today, the different monitors, as well as the different equipment that we've used to shoot these videos. Subscribe for more content like this. We're going to have additional tech videos on monitors, graphic cards, cases, peripherals, pretty much everything you can think of. Additionally, we have links in the description to our Twitter and Facebook accounts so you can follow us and see what we're up to. Thanks again for watching. We are Gus Tech, and we'll see you next time.